Okay, so I wanted to show <clears throat> how to read these drawings that um, I have constructed. So Julianne is my client and she has a yom. A yom is um, it's a dome <laughs> with a tipi, uh, with a yurt roof. Yeah, so it's a geodesic uh, one frequency dome, but it's made on a seven pointed geometry, which makes it a little bit more trickier with angles and stuff. It has a standard door, um, which is mounted like in this way. It's a temporary construction, obviously. She's provided me with really good. Um, um, just dimensions which really helped me so everything heights width so I was able to <clears throat> replicate it into my 3d program and um, <clears throat> okay so let's start so the, the, the here are the following drawings that I've sent I'll be <laughs> referring back to the 3d drawing here so let's so what, what do we have we have a platform um, okay and um, we have um, a roof that basically needs a changing so I have recommended that the roof uh, well she, she Julianne has recommended the roof will be a separate uh, freestanding unit and uh, we're gonna thicken up her current frame which is 2 by 2 inch it's made with hubs like um, like this if you look into this corner you can see these metal hubs they just connect these poles it's a very lightweight construction and the whole thing is just cloth and this lightweight two by two and it stands so we're gonna what we're gonna do is we're gonna thicken up we're gonna add an additional two by two to the current frame but instead of it ending on the hub we're gonna have it come together to you know form its own geometry yeah um, so I uh, here I recommended to Julianne that she looks into uh, whatever dome hub constructions or dome uh, geometries that uh, are available and there are hundreds if not thousands of ways of how we can you know connect a dome together um, here like for example like here you know and that's a way so for example this is a really neat connection um, that's a, a, another connection you can just join them like that um, and then connect them with screws like just mount them at an angle or have a little plate made or make a little plywood plate so there's hundreds of ways of connecting um, triangles together and they can be very very simple and they'll still be strong enough especially if it doesn't have to be um, you know um, dismounted like this unit has to be you know up down up down you you, you can just uh, mount them with screws long screws and call it a day okay so basically uh, the way that I've suggested that we oh and on the walls um, Julianus feels comfortable with acrete blocks so basically that's what we're gonna do we're gonna create acrete uh, um, blocks that um, that can be permanent instead of the current canvas uh, roof I mean walls well everything so we're gonna basically this canvas is coming to its life's end so we need to rework it okay so basically um, let's look at the these drawings so <clears throat> I've provided so as a, a bio architect, I've looked at this whole thing and I and I've started giving off sizes. Um, so let's first start with the roof and everything to do with the roof. So the roof stands on the beams, yeah. Um, the beams are um, either round posts or um, which is the cheapest way. Okay, so I've provided the angles of how this cut this is a horizontal so how to read this angle see this line 34.31 degrees so that can be that can be cut like that and cut down so then that beam will sit on 
the the roof beam will sit on this post this uh, post that supports the uh, the roof here's a little profile section that you can actually see a little perspective how it will sit yeah so that angle so you have two posts you have a longer post and you have a shorter post okay mm, so that holds the roof um, the longer post okay the reason for that is because the roof kinks okay kinks up and that creates a longer post and here the roof is absolutely flat why flat because it supports the top part of the triangle and it's absolutely flat so therefore it makes the post that's slightly shorter so what we have here is um, distance center to center of these posts okay we have um, and we have the distance away from the platform so there's a current platform Julian just double check that it's five meters <clears throat> exactly five meters I know you yours is in feet so we just need to just uh, convert okay um, but basically if that is five meters okay then I have a size here of um, let's get back to that size um, yeah so you see it's 499 for uh, so almost five meters okay I have a size of the <clears throat> shorter pole okay let's just double check it's 20.84 and and that's from corner of your platform to the center of the pole 20.84 centimeters okay um, and this is from the flat side of the platform obviously that's type 7 the previous one and this one is also times 7 flat side of the platform to um, to the again the center of the pole and it's 48.37 so let's just double check which is which okay so let's just select this pole okay so that's the 48 yeah and this is the pole that holds the kink roof up that's the longer pole so the longer pole is 48 um, uh, 0 0.37 uh, centimeters away from the flat part of your base yeah and the shorter pole uh, is 20.84 centimeters because it's from the corner of your base okay so <clears throat> I'm sure you're going to be doing this with your carpenter um, so once again here you can see clearly uh, the distance what I'm talking about so the dark blue is your base okay um, yeah then here you can see the center to center 126.29 yeah centimeters okay um, and it should all be the same don't ignore this 121 let me show you what I mean view set view bottom dimensions align dimensions so center of the pole center of the pole 126 and the same here center so they're equal they equally spaced 126.29 centimeters yeah okay so that's the that's the that's all your poles um, they're here and basically the roof is uh, in, in sections and it has let's hide that the roof has uh, these beams the current distance between the beams so if we just show you here okay it I, I just estimate it you, you could do this slightly more 
so it's about 40 centimeters so one and a half foot uh, I think will be ample one and a half foot between the the beams and these beams are there to support the roof I don't know what they're called rafters or these main beams so it's got main beams which is two by four uh, which is this big one yeah the all two by fours and th th that little kink is what I was showing you, the little cutout. So those angles I gave you is this angle here, between this line and this line, okay? And uh, the same applies for the, um, you know, obviously the, um, <clears throat> the, the other pole as well, the shorter one and the longer one. Okay, so let's look at the diagram and just clarify what, what I mean by the shorter and longer. So you see that this one is a longer pole, it's 34.31 degrees. And let me show you the shorter pole. It's 37.31. Same cutout. So this angle is this angle here. This little sharp point is 37.31 degrees. Yeah. Your um your a carpenter or whoever's gonna be cutting your wood will be able to read these diagrams pretty easily okay then we have the hub that holds it all at the top okay um, so the hub uh, it has little cutouts um, you don't have to worry about them now um, the diameter is 84.85 from point to the flat side yeah from the point to the flat side uh, there you can see it clearly here uh, the angle between these you know these angles is 128 degrees okay that looks good that looks right um, here we have the angle of uh, these beams again 37.14 um, that's obviously for the shorter pole because the bigger the angle the more over push you know the more is going to be pushed down there and this is the angle of 34.31 so this uh, this rafter it's obviously seven of these and seven of those yeah this is 14 rafters in total so these big four by twos yeah and this angle is 34.31 so smaller angle means it's going to be a higher beam there yeah so it's less okay so that's that should be pretty clear um th this is the angle between the roof 154.31 uh, so that's this wide angle <clears throat> another angle I'd like to give you um, if I haven't already is um, of these individual one of, of this little so that's how you're gonna cut out each sheet let's see if it's already here yeah there it is 77.10 degrees is the angle of this cut and that obviously the same everywhere um, yeah so <clears throat> your carpenter once again will be able to figure the, these uh, this out um, but there are special tools that measure angles and that's how you're gonna cut this roof okay um, the distance of the sheet is the shorter to the shorter pole is 322 um yeah which is the flat side to the flat side yeah because it's, you know the two sheets go flat and this is the kinked side is 309.67 centimeters okay then um so that's yeah that's pretty much uh the roof pieces um I will provide you this 3D file as well, uh, OBG, so you could you would be able to read it in any CAD software and um, be able to pull out any necessary angles that you require. Okay, um, and then we have a wall. So what to do with the walls? Let's just uh, finish this. Oh, sorry, one more thing. The way the hub works here is um, you have a skylight. So you just need to look at how you're going to be connecting the hub to your skylight. 
um, again, that would be probably the trickiest part of the construction is just making sure that this is waterproof. I suggest looking into my dome course, the way I waterproof, there is a skylight waterproofing section, byveda.co forward slash um, dome home or living by a dome and um, there's a waterproofing using geotextile and um, waterproofing liquid that you impregnate this and then it's all always it has a little plaster or um, yeah you know metal flashing if you want to work I don't know how you're going to finish this little bit at the top because um, you know it, it all depends on what you already have and how you're going to join what you have to uh, the hub that I've designed for you you know that holds all these beams together and um, and then you know you can join it all together uh, and make sure it's waterproof and that's the method I teach at our dome course okay then we have a door so this door basically has I suggest using these acrete pieces which are going to be first of all they're going to be in blocks so acrete will you do in blocks let me just show you what a block uh, looks like I mean uh, not for Julianne but for anyone else uh, who will be watching this so acrete generally is made in um, um, one by one foot blocks and they're quite easily cut yeah and they're put together with uh, standard plaster or acrete plaster mix uh, so that's you know doesn't uh, have temperature bridges but in this case you don't have a super cold climate so okay so let's look at the wall so basically we have um, so this this would be this would be acrete. Basically, these acrete blocks are going to be mounted like that. If you're going to be putting your little glass windows, they have to. They can't be mounted straight into acrete because they'll be flimsy. Acrete is flimsy. You need to create a wooden frame. So the same two by two inch frame, you're going to, you know, basically run it into your triangular wall and then um, connect it like that and then sandwich your window and then maybe put a couple of screws that are still sticking out so this thing doesn't this window doesn't go left right yeah and then you're going to be cutting your blocks which are in these lines you know which are going to be one by one foot and you're going to be placing them into this um, but before you do that very important that you create the zigzag okay so let's look at the zigzag that's going to be made from wire and basically you have a double one you have one on the front you have one on the back you, you maybe will have some screws that are just sticking out so you can you know wrap around it. the key message here is that this is tight the zigzag is nice and tight so you do the back part let's say that's leaning slightly forward so like these you see these, these you, you see this brick is uh, this uh, triangle is leaning forward so you do the inner part of that because the bricks will want to fall in yeah and then you uh, put your bricks in um, and then you do the wire on the outside and then you do a geotextile cloth with impregnated with cement mix we also teach it in our dome course and if you've done a dome guy course they also teach it there <clears throat> so anyway um, it's uh, that will merge it all into one monolithic you know uh, metal wire reinforced uh, um, uh, acrid block uh, that will all fuse together into one monolithic wall yeah so this is the way I see it I mean I'm sure there could be better ways of doing it that this is the way I would do it and maybe as you do it you'll find a better way of doing it but if you just do the bricks without um, running them so in these these are all these yellow triangles are the acrid bricks yeah so if you just do the bricks without the wire I, I have a feeling that um, if somebody gives a kick into this wall uh, it might just fall through. You know, acrete is not that strong. Um, and acrete is only strong on a dome uh, when it's uh, a self-supporting structure. Triangle is a flat structure and this is what I recommend you do. So it's not the super thin wire, I don't know, two millimeters. I don't know what it is in how many inches or, or I mean, one sixteenth of an inch or one eighth of an inch. I don't know, two millimeters uh, would be ample, two and a half millimeters would be ample. That's one tenth of an inch, I believe. Something like that. One eighth of an inch uh, should be more than enough. Okay, but the key message is that you do it tight. 
Okay, the other key message is anyone anything you want to mount, like this window, for example, you have you want you have some triangular windows. Um, they have to be mounted on this two by twos. So the two by twos, uh, basically, you put your window down. You'd make a frame for it. Let's say that's just glass. You make a frame for it. You'd silicone it in, or however you're going to mount the wood, the glass to the wood, um, and then you would put that in inside of your uh, second triangle that we're going to be doing there, or or its size. You chalk it out on the floor, and that will give you these little these little nuggets how how long to make them, and and then that. Get, they get screwed on here um, either with um, those connectors, those, let's see if we've got them here, those metal connectors or, um, yeah, like these guys, you would connect it to, to, the, to, to your main frame or you just screw it in with long screws, also fine, you know, it all depends on how quality you want it, but you're not going to see it. It's all going to be hidden in by the air creep. So what I'm trying to say is, if you want to make a window, you need to you need to have it nice and strongly uh, connected. Um, the size is I, I I've just given it the size of um, more or less. It doesn't have to be that because I don't know what size window you have. Obviously, the size window plus two by two frame all around, and that will give you the the size. So don't worry about the size. Um, two by two is five by five centimeters. So all my size in centimeters just reminds me. Uh, so that's the walls. Uh, that that's the walls with windows. Okay. And then, um, sorry, just something I forgot. These beams have to be uh, either cemented in, or if it, you're not allowed to cement it in, then and then it's one foot. If you can cement it, one foot is enough sticking into the ground. So that's the ground level, the bottom of this blue block. If you're not going to cement it, you can bash rocks in. So just YouTube how to set fence posts with rocks. You just hammer rocks or broken bricks in. You hammer them in as you layer them. And then that has to be one foot long, the, the, the excess of the pole. Yeah. Um, so you should have yeah, the heights. You should all have that. Just, uh, just double check. So the, uh, the thickness of the pole is about four to five inch. Five inch would be more than ample, 12 centimeters. Um, yeah, there it is, 12 centimeters. Uh, and there is the sizes of these beams. Uh, so 166, this one is 145.64. Your platform is 40, as you stated. I believe it's uh, you know, 12 or 15 inches. So I don't know, it's, uh, I converted that, that's 40. And then th these are the excess. So if you're cementing, 30 is enough. If you, if you're not cementing, then 30 centimeters, uh, which is one foot. If you're not cementing, then two foot into the ground. Okay, just so we wrap that up. Okay, um, so that's that's it. I don't know what else is there. Um, let's look at what size is this. I don't know. I don't know what size. I believe it's. Uh, Yeah, it's not it's not necessary. Um, yeah, it's not necessary. Oh, it's it's the size. How much is the roof sticking out? Just to show you that your roof will be sticking out. That's the end of your dome here, the dome walls, and that's the end of your roof. Your roof will roughly stick out forty one centimeters past your home. So although your roof is a self supporting structure. Uh, what's important to note is that I've designed it all quite precisely that um, your yarn wall will touch onto this. So you could screw it on, you should screw it all in, connect together with do, those, those uh, uh, metal brackets. That's where you definitely need to use them so it's nice and strong on all of these connections. So that way, um, that, that way your, your walls become supportive and um, can connect to the roof which will be nice and strong on these beams and um, another thing that I forgot to draw you need to draw the triangulation okay which is from not draw but uh, uh, two by twos you create little um, brackets from here to here and the same from here to here on all 
on all the posts uh, about a foot across along just something a foot and a half um, that will create make sure that the structure that won't just wobble out or spin out uh, that creates rigidity triangulation creates rigidity uh, you might not need it um, because when you connect it all to the walls you just need to feel how sturdy it is but uh, I would recommend maybe just two by twos just create a um, on every single um, where you have every beam, you would you would pop one here, you would pop one there, yeah, you pop one here, you pop one here, you pop one here, just all around. Um, you might not need it, but like if you have some extra wood, just uh, just take notes of that. And um, yeah, that's it, that's it. And double check for me the the base, just because. Um, I need to make sure that my base is the same size as your base because then these sizes that I've given you from center pole, center around beam, that, or post, let's call them posts, these guys, uh, center of round post to the edge, uh, I need to give you those distances based on, um, you know, mine is currently five meters. So I don't know what that's in feet. Okay, I hope that helps. Um, I'll send it right away and uh, if anyone else watching it I hope you guys got something out of it and please uh, reach out if you need me to help you figure out your projects on the land um, yeah I've got quite an engineering mindset and I'm here to help one more thing this is an acre block <laughs> okay so they just keep that in mind that's also acrid that's also going to have zigzag um and uh, that basically sits right there okay and um you don't need to do anything above it just hide it okay and by the way we have a rhino drawing class on 24th of september so if anybody wants to learn how to draw in Rhino and learn to draw blueprints. Uh, the website is buybeta.co forward slash um, uh, forward slash 3D. Yeah. Okay. So I mean, this is just a quick mock up. Um, yeah. So this is a creed uh, part as well, and the door sits in there, and anything above it is not necessary because that's all. You know, that that's the main thing where the wind or anything will come through or rain. Um, you know, based on what's happening above it and behind it, you, you'll need to have a look and maybe just do a wooden a little slats or silicone, depends on how much of a gap it is. Um, I didn't get a photos from you what's happening but right there, but it looks like it's it should be fine. But obviously, if you've got any gaps, you need to cover it with either foam or mm, like foam is very good for insulation as well um, uh, construction foam yeah, it comes in a can or wood if it's a big gap so I, I don't think so because you obviously want to open your door you don't want anything sticking to it so it's just here so where there might be some air coming through so just double check 